Well, good evening. You join me this evening doing something a little bit different. I've come down to the beach. I'm going to try and catch a few bass on lures. But you could probably write on a postage stamp what I know about lure fishing for bass. It's something that I've recently got into the last couple of summers, and I'm enjoying it more and more. But to help you get some tips on catching bass on lures, I've got some help with me this evening. So I've got my friend Rob down, who's far more experienced. He's going to talk you through a few different parts about this type of fishing what lures to use, what conditions to fish in, and a bit of the hardware you need. So I'm probably going to enjoy a nice evening's bass fishing and hand it over to Rob to talk you through his best tips for getting a few bass on your lure gear. Awesome. So I've come out this evening teaming up with Phil to do some bass fishing. And I love my bass fishing, especially through the summer months. We picked um, this day about a week or so ahead and it was due thunderstorms and all kinds of crazy weather. Luckily the forecast has been totally wrong and we're looking at a beautiful evening. Sea conditions are pretty good. We have an evening high tide. Right about 8 o'clock it's due to be at its most and it's a 5.6 so there should be a lot of water movement at the top. That will hopefully bring the bass into shore. The only thing I would change is I like a little bit more surf and bounce. We have a crosswind coming slightly off the land and the sea is just a little bit flat. But with the other conditions in mind I'm fairly confident that we'll catch a fish or two. When I'm fishing for bass in open water, especially on beaches like this, which don't have a lot of feature, the surf itself is the main targeting feature. And when it's bouncing and there's rough areas, there's often stranded fish and the bass can come quite close into shore. However, when it's a little bit flatter like this, they can often stay out at a little bit more range and be a little bit more cautious. So we're on the east coast and the kind of conditions I would be looking for would be light northerlies, something in the three to 10 mile an hour range and anything crosswind, westerly or southerly. Unfortunately, being a sand and chalk region, our coast colours up very quick. So if the wind gets too strong, it's game over. But for those light gusts on shore, they make the sea bounce and the bass will come in. Southerlies can be fantastic, nice wind off the back calm seas but often you'll find your fishing tends to be better around the hours of dawn and dusk. So one of the ways you can target fish if you don't have a distinguishable feature is by covering ground and one of my favourite lures for covering ground and moving fast is the Savage Gear Surf Seeker. It flies out like an absolute bullet and it's quite quick to retrieve whether that be steady or with stops and pauses. You can walk and cast and find fish that are out at range. If you find a pocket of fish you can move to more effective bait fish presentations, something like the new sea bass minnows. They're great. You can wind them again, or you can add lots of knocks and pauses and jerks into them, as I like to fish them with. Sometimes, though, in those cross winds and heavy onshores, the sea gets a little bit too bouncy, and there can often be weed around, in which case your treble hooked options can be a little bit difficult to fish, at which point I may move to a soft plastic. And depending on the depth of the beach, I may fish one with a jig head, such as a Savage Gear sand eel, or some that runs a little bit shallower like the um, new gravity sticks. Rod and reel wise we've got two very different combos with us. I have got a 10 foot 15 to 46 gram Savage Gear SGSA. It's an absolute powerhouse which will launch a metal out easily 100 to 120 yards with a tailwind. That one's perfect for finding fish at range. I'm using that with the SGS6 reel. It's a 4,000 size, carries lots of braid, and I've got a Berkeley Nautil on mine. Phil, on the other hand, is using the SGS5, an excellent entry-level bass rod at right around 160 pound-ish. They're perfect for launching all kinds of lures out. It's a nine foot, and I believe it's a 10 to 35, which covers most metals, hard lures, and soft lures all together. It's a very fast action rod, and it lends itself well to a ton of presentations. Go. Well, there you go. You did say to me we're now coming into prime bass time and make sure you've got your best lures on and well there you go. There we go. Lovely fish at the top. We're saying a lot of there we goes today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's the excitement isn't it? The sea bass minnow did the trick for this one. Um, absolutely crushed that in the surf. 
So we'll swap over to these, I think, and see if we can pick up a few more. My turn next, Rob. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well done, mate. Back. OK, let's talk action. When it comes to casting these sort of lures, I find they go a lot further on a shorter length of line. And it's just a case of whacking them and sending them. When they hit the water, I like to keep the tip high. It keeps it over the waves, keeps it over the weed. And once the lure starts to retrieve, I'll feel it grip and I may stop it every now and then. Just give it a couple of little jerks or pauses. But once it grips and beds in, you can retrieve it right to the surface. And there we go, there's a fish. Whoosh. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, here it goes. It's a feisty little bass. <laughs> but man, do these things pull in the surf. <laughs> Find a little wave to bring this one up on. Oh, there we go. There we go, this little guy smashed that sea bass minnow on the way back in. Hey, the surf's really picked up now. As I say, with that high retrieve, keeping the line above the waves and the weed, this one absolutely crushed it. We'll slip it straight back. Well, after watching Rob catch far too many bass, and I had just that one little one, I must admit, I listened to a bit of advice to avoid that weed, kept the rod tip a bit higher, and then just worked the lure a bit slower. A much better one, that one, Rob. So thank you so much for taking us down the beach tonight, because I would be fairly lost chucking lures off this giant beach and knowing where to start. So mega pleased with that one. You better slip that fella back and think about the long walk back to the car. Definitely. <laughs> Lovely fish. Go, Basco! I think he's gone.